Hello, grade 12 geography learners. I trust that you are well and that you have spent some time on revising the previous sub questions of question four. This lesson will focus on the question 4.6 of the 2019 examination paper. And this question focuses on the tertiary sector. But now you ought to have known that the primary, secondary, and tertiary sectors contribute to our country's economy. And we have gone through the primary, we have gone through our secondary sectors, and the focus in this lesson is going to be our tertiary sector. Now, the tertiary sector is one that provides services. And as you can see here, we are in the, in the, in the tertiary sector, there we are there, and we're focusing on the informal or what we call the informal sector now the informal sector is also referred to by other names we refer to it as the hidden economy and sometimes it's referred to as the second economy so let's see exactly why these sectors are called what they are called and here we go on today and there's our question and we're speaking about the informal sector and we're saying this is called a second economy because people create their own work right the second economy people create their own work it's also referred to as a hidden economy because a contribution made by the informal sector is not reflected in our country's official figures and the reason why it's not reflected is because these businesses are not registered so SARS the South African Revenue Services have no record of these informal sector activities. And therefore, you find that the alternate names are the secondary sector, as you can see here. It's also called the hidden economy, as you can see here. So the informal sector has two other names, and they fall and they form part of the second part of the tertiary sector. Now, the examples of the informal sector are, are, are quite many, but of course, we'll just look at a few of them. And for example, there's here, the, the flea markets fall on the informal sector, the hawkers, informal sector, our street barbers, and plenty of them giving haircuts along the streets, along on the pavements, our daycare centers, our daycare, sorry, not daycare centers, but the daycare where children, where parents leave children, uh, they fall under these activities. Garage workshops, right? People repairing motor vehicles at home, they fall under the sector. Some of them are hairdressers operating from home. So this list is by no means exhausted, right? So here are some examples of uh, people that will, of examples of informal sector, right? So let's move on to the next slide. And here we're speaking about the reasons why people would be involved in the informal sector, right? The reasons why people get to work or involved. And here, uh, the first reason is there's an economic recession. And we do know currently the COVID-19, many people are unemployed and therefore they would now involve themselves in their own kind of employment to be able to create work, also referred to as a slum in the economy. Our second reason is mechanization of the farms, where machines are now taking over the work of people. And as a result, workers now become unemployed. There's it here. Workers are unemployed. Climatic hazards, your droughts, your floods, will have a negative impact on farming and food security, but right? negative impact on farming. And again, workers are going to be jobless. Your next reason is that large businesses, the big companies, your formal businesses, they subcontract work to the informal sector. In other words, these, these formal businesses will take on those that work and they will now employ people from the informal sector to be involved in this work. Right? So there's a thing. Right? The formal business are going to uh, employ people from the informal sector uh, to do the work. And the reason why they do that is to avoid the labor regulations. For example, these workers here, 
right? there's no tax being paid by them. The issue of leave and so on doesn't apply to these people here. So the large businesses will now employ the informal sector. The apartheid policy may have had a role to play in this, in that it created lots of people that are jobless. Right? The apartheid policy, people are jobless, and therefore th these people can't find work easily, and therefore they must now find work in the informal sector. Uh, our immigrants are people that come from other areas, other countries, to find work in our country. They too can be employed in the formal sector. Perhaps, they're not, perhaps they have no paperwork, no IDs, and therefore they will find work in the informal sector. Right? So there, the reasons we've given. And here's the diagram given to us in the 2019 examination paper. And there's the minister, he says we should ban street trading, right? So he's quite, he's quite vocal on that. Street uh, trading should be banned. There's it there, it should be, become illegal, it should not take place in his view. And we should find these offenders, 5,000 rands. Now remember these informal traders don't have 5,000 rand to pay, but so by saying 5,000 rand, we're trying to minimize people involved in the informal sector. And there's the informal trader. And he's thinking, this minister is foolish, right? So let's see what kinds of questions have been asked in the examinations last year. And the first question, it says, define the term informal sector, right? First question, we are required to define the term informal sector. And there's it here. They are small businesses. They are not registered, important. They are small businesses. They have no licenses. They're not registered with SARS. And therefore, they don't pay any taxes. So we're looking for three or four ideas. Small businesses, not registered, not paying tax, don't have a license, and uh, of course, not registered with SARS, and that will score you full marks in a question like that. The next question that we've asked in the paper, what evidence indicates that the um, minister is not in favor of the informal sector? Like English, you're now analyzing visual material. From the diagram, it says, is it there? We should ban street trading. Street trading, there's your mark. We should find them 5,000 rand, directly from the source. There's it there. And again, the facial expression of the minister indicates that he's not happy with street traders, with the informal traders, with these vendors, with these hawkers, right? The body language, as you can see here, the facial expression indicates that he doesn't like these things to continue. Right, we've done well. Uh, the next question, let's see what the next question is going to be asking us. And there we're looking at this here, and it says, give a reason, right? Give a reason for the minister not wanting informal street trading taking place. Not wanting, and right? why does not want them? And certainly, there must be some harm coming from these informal traders. And if you look at, for example, the first one here, it's taking away business from the formal sector. So the informal sector, informal businesses are robbing the formal businesses uh, of their normal activity. And the government would be at a loss in terms of this because this, this formal business pays taxes. So the government must not protect them. The informal businesses tend to keep the area untidy, causing litter, there's it there. Having potential health hazards, there's it there. Right? Uh, imagine buying food from a street vendor. Now the food does not have any uh, health protocols being maintained. The area becomes unsightly. It spoils the aesthetics, the beauty of the area. The high levels of pollution. The high levels of pollution. The, it, it, it hinders the movement of pedestrians on the pavements. In other words, your normal shoppers they can move quite easily in the area. And you might recall uh, earlier this year, the Metro Police in Verlum 
uh, took a tough stance against the uh, street vendors in the area because they were congesting the pavements. They were making it difficult for, for um, customers to enter and shop in the formal businesses. Right. So the question is, why doesn't the minister not want informal trading? Why is against the idea of informal trading? And the next reason is they are not registered. They're not paying tax. So the government makes no money from them. And as you know, we need uh, the tax for all of these businesses. Right. Sometimes these uh, informal businesses may deal in counterfeit goods, illegal products. All we want is one reason. And of course, you've got many of those reasons that are being asked there. Our next question, I think the final question here is give two reasons, right? Give two reasons why the informal sector is important. Important to who? Important to the people that are working in that sector. Important question, four marks. Give reasons why the informal sector is important for the informal trader. There's it. Why is it important for the informal trader? And again, we're looking for simple ideas. There's it, the first one there. It gives them income because they have a source of work. There's it. Right? People are working. People are working to their own um, involvement. People are working because they are quite resourceful. So people are working. They have income, it reduces their poverty. Important, it reduces dependence on social grants. There's it, right? So people are working and then you have reducing dependence on social grant. Because people are working, it now improves their living standard. Because people are working, they're able to acquire food and there's food security issues coming in. Right? People that are working in the informal sector may also develop entrepreneurial skills and now become more skilled. And of course, people like to work in the informal sector because you have flexible working hours, flexible trading hours. And, and, you, and you know, if we support informal sectors, we can purchase from them at odd hours of the day, unlike a formal business that generally opens from eight to five. Informal sectors, you can purchase after hours. People like working here because of the convenience of working from home. Flexible working times as well. It doesn't require large amounts of capital. There's not much overheads in informal business, not much expenses, no rent and water and lights and no paying salaries, not paying tax. So you don't require large amounts of money to be able to start these businesses there. Of course, they don't require permits and they don't have to comply with trade regulations. Now, there are numerous factors. All you want is any two of them. But we should be preparing for an eight mark question and we're looking at give two reasons why the informal sector is important for the informal trader. There's it again, very quickly, it creates work. It reduces poverty. Person has income, develops skills. Or from the government point of view, it's going to reduce social dependence on grants and the government is happy. People's living standards are going to improve, right? And this, of course, is going to promote food security. So there's an important question, learners, on, on this issue. And I want to urge you to spend some time again quickly on all four questions or in all six questions in question four. And you will realize that the A, with, that the a in geography is certainly within your grasp. Uh, I'm going to part ways with you just now, but we'll certainly get back to the next question, question three, in a day or so. Please stay safe and continue revising your work.